Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees and I'm thrilled to welcome back Emily Tuttle to the show. Emily, welcome back to The Skating Lesson. Hey Dave, thank you for inviting me. Well, for those of you who don't know or don't remember, Emily Tuttle is a dance choreographer turned skating choreographer. She's done some gymnastics. She went to those liberal arts schools like Sarah Lawrence College where they didn't even have grades because they were too smart for that. And they just studied the origins of dance and choreography. And that's how we met on Twitter years ago, and we've continued the conversation ever since. Emily's always been kind of a consigliere to the skating lesson wherever I run my thoughts about her from week to week. Emily, how the heck have you been? That's such a lovely compliment. Thank you, Dave. I'm, yeah. doing, I'm doing very well. I'm excited, too. There's way too much skating to talk about right, for this weekend. So, Yeah, for those of you who yeah. don't remember, Emily once wrote this brilliant article. I think it was one of the best things I've ever read about skating where you talked about all the different free dance themes back in the 2014 season. It's one of my favorite things I've ever read about skating. So I'm oh, thrilled to talk about these programs with you, Emily, because you've been a little bit MIA this summer. I was obviously very into the Olympics, and I felt like you weren't matching my excitement level. Talking about the gymnastics? Yeah, the, you know what? You just weren't there. You were busy. You're skating on your own now. I do, sometimes. You take lessons, and you're just, you, you know, you're too much of a busy girl. I don't know, you haven't had time, but I'm thrilled to get you in this place and discuss the skating season with you, try to get you uh, on board. Thank you, Dave, I appreciate it. Yeah, so let's start. Look, there was a Japan Open this weekend. There's one every year. There is one every year. But you know what? We now have the Russians, who are... We have Evgenia Medvedeva. She is the world champion. She's an incredible technician. Yeah. She's doing a 9-11 tribute program. And I felt that we saw this at the Russian test gate a couple weeks ago, but we couldn't really hear the audio. So we got to see this really in HD for the first time. And I want to know your thoughts about this as a choreographer, because I'm watching this and I'm me. And yeah. I, I was a little bit troubled when I heard that there is audio from the obviously it's from a movie and obviously it's from a movie about 9-11 so it's not exactly the audio from 9-11 but to me it's like too soon I find it a little bit inappropriate that we're hearing the audio sounds of people going through devastation during that time and I wondered what you thought about that is this an artistic tribute is this pandering is it inappropriate what is you know your artistic take on this I don't know if it's pandering. Well, I read about the program before I saw it. Mm -hmm. And if I hadn't read about it, I don't think I would have gotten it. I don't, no. not, that I, not that I get it now, but I don't think I would have known that's what she was going for. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, so I was expecting, I was thinking it was likely that I would be offended by it. And I really, I really wasn't. I also wasn't moved by it. Um, I, I didn't take much from it at all. And so I, I'm interested to hear that you found it um, a little bit, jarring as a, as a New Yorker or as somebody who is, you know, alive on 9-11. Yeah. Um, I, I find the alive. audio jarring, not necessarily, the, I'm not moved by the program. No. I find it ineffective. I don't think that she has an understanding of it, and I don't think that the program does anything to convey that emotion through the movement or the choreography. To me, it's kind of playing in the background, and it's disjointed. I felt that her program last year was quite good for her in that age. Yes, it's somber, and some people think it's too somber for her as a teenager, but I got last year's program. Like I was there, I was with it, I was there for the journey. This season, I don't know if they're biting off more than they can chew, but I, I don't I don't think that this is, obviously I think this is Ilya Averbuch's vision. I don't think that Evgenia Medvedeva said, I wanna do a 9-11 right. tribute. So to me, this is a problem where a choreographer has a vision and maybe the skater isn't involved. And we see this a lot in skating. Sure. Yeah, maybe this isn't the right program for her. I think it is actually the same program as last year. I think it's the same layout. It is the same um, layout. Which we see from many other girls. We'll get to you, course, Ashley, later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. It's. Um, I'm not surprised that we have the same layout, you know, from season to season, because I think the, the system is so complicated and, and yeah. you know, the, the requirements are such... I'm just not moved by it, but do you think it even matters what she skates to? Is she consistent enough yeah. that she is a gold medal as long as she stays on her feet? Well, 
I think Mia Hara got a little bit closer to her at this event. Is that that's right? And I was looking at the uh, the breakdown, and I she wasn't getting you know all threes for all these elements, which gave me some relief. I don't think the jumps deserve you know a row of threes. Um, I think it's going to be impossible to beat her if she if she keeps landing all the jumps. Yeah. But I think she's the best all around at this point. Just. But I wouldn't give the program as high marks as it got artistically last season. Uh, I think for presentation, okay, yeah. you know, you know, the choreography, I would not be giving it, you know, as well, you know, as high marks. But I think she's strong. Obviously, technically, she's very strong. I have a question about the Lutz edge. But I think overall, she looks ready for the season. And what's she doing at the end with that phone call? Have you read anything about that? So the phone call is supposed to be a phone call from whoever she's waving goodbye to in the beginning, her lover, her husband, her partner. And that's supposed to be either she's getting the call that that person has passed or she's getting a mm -hmm. call from that person saying that they're okay. okay. And it's supposed to be open-ended for the viewer. And that's what I read in the interview with Albert Book. Which way do you take it? I, 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 <laughs> I don't. I, I don't think it's impactful one way or the other. Right. I, yeah, it's, to me, look, I, it's just... I, I, will, I don't find it offensive, I, but yeah. I, yeah, I, I don't find it moving. Does it remind but... you of a time for peace with uh, Lobacheva and Averbuk? Well, I think that was a more impactful program. Yeah. I mean... Was that ending lift Tower 2 falling? I always wondered when she fell, and that's what I always came to mind. And that's horrible to think, but that's what I yeah. always... I never thought about it. And now I, now I have to. Now you have to go back and you need to look. But let's talk about Satoko Miyahara because yeah, last please. season she was a lovely skater. I think she's someone that we've had our eye on for a long time. She has really quality yeah. edges. And last season she was going into the World Championships as one of the favorites. And she did not come out of the World Championships with the same right. result that many people felt that she would coming in, even though she skated cleanly. You know, there's a lot of talk that there's American bias of the world. There's also talk that her jumps are not as big. And when you put her next to the other skaters and next to all of the top skaters, then she her patterns look smaller. What do you make of her yeah. skating and where she is in her career at this point? Yeah, that's a great question. She did sort of just get lost at Worlds last year after having, I think, a great season, if Fantastic, I remember correctly. Yeah. And I was thinking about her this weekend, and I was like, there's 500 or so days left until the Olympics, and is there enough time for her to be in a position where she could win the Olympics? And I, my, my, my answer is, I think so. I think that there's enough time for her to build up that momentum and to have enough wins uh, under her belt. But then you sent me that video of uh, Marin Honda, <laughs> Marin Honda <laughs> who was on my radar last year but had missed, uh, apparently is having just a great fall right now. Where have you been, Emily? <laughs> And I was completely blown away by her and started to get very worried uh, for Miyahara, um, considering this girl is age eligible for the Olympics. Uh, as for Miyahara's long program, I think it's wonderful. I think you guys have talked about this on the show. I don't need to, um, I'll just add my own I, I, my own praise for it. I think it's it's beautiful. And I think one thing it's that's easy to like about... It's a masterpiece, yeah. Oh, he's, he's wonderful in this program. One thing I really love about her is she's always getting better. She's always trying new things. And I don't think that's always the case for a lot of her peers. Mm -hmm. um, her, some of her Russian peers, I think, you know, can repeat the same content. And um, she, she's, I think it's a wonderful program. And I think the short program is wonderful. And I, you know, I, I want the best for her. And this Marin Honda situation, I, I think. Um, and they you know, train together. Yeah. So, you know, her jumps are much bigger. Mm -hmm. um, so Doko's trying to make her jumps <laughs> bigger. The one thing I notice is that as she's trying to make them bigger, you know, the flip and the lutz look a little bit tilted at times. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, when I can, when I think about her jumps, I compare them against, you know, her previous, uh, her jumps last year, or the year before. And I remember her when she was a junior. And I remember watching her and thinking, "There's just no way this is ever going to happen." Mm -hmm. And look how far she's come. Yeah. But when you look at her against the field, um, you know, there's still a long ways to go there. But she, she, she's not, she's not getting threes, but she's got, she got some twos. I just looked at the protocols before we got on, and there were a lot of ones and twos in there, mostly twos. So. You know, she's obviously an incredible hard worker. You don't become that consistent without hard work. So it's not by accident that she is where she is, and she is working to improve. Can she improve in 500 days? I think she can improve a bit. I think she's always going to be a contender. And whether you know, We've seen at the Olympics, anything can happen. Shizuka Arakawa won when everyone was talking about Sasha Cohen and Irina Sutskaya. So I think that if you're in the mix and you're in that top three and you're clean and can lay it down... We've seen a lot of things happen at the Olympics. So I think that Zadokamiyahara is someone that's definitely in there. 
is she the leader? I'm not sure, but anything could happen yeah. under pressure, especially Olympic pressure. So, but there's been so much talk about pressure, but let's look at the American ladies because last yeah. season, Ashley Wagner ended the U S ladies medal drought at the world championships. She originally had a free skate, uh, to game of Thrones. They ditched that free skate midsummer. She used Jeremy Abbott's music, Muse, his signature piece that he used in 2012 and 2014, the Exogenesis uh, piece of music, I believe number two, correct? Or number two, number three, number two. And is a bit of a surprise, I think, that she used it because it's more delicate than we usually consider Ashley being, but there's also an angsty part. So she's going a little bit against type and then a little bit too type. What did you make of this piece for her when you finally saw it? Well, I actually, because I've been MIA, Dave, I, I didn't know all that, <laughs> that you just, all that background you just gave me, and I didn't know that she was skating to Exogenesis before I saw it um, okay. on Saturday. And my initial reaction was, you know, what's, why? Um, and it's a larger question in skating. It's a larger problem. There's the incentive structure within the sport. I mean, you're not penalized for using something that's been used a million times, and you're certainly not rewarded mm -hmm. for, for trying something new. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's a, a totally acceptable vehicle for her. I think there's some lovely pieces of it. I really like the choreographic sequence at the end into the two spins. Mm -hmm. I had the footwork was a little bit angsty. I think she could dial that back a little bit. I don't think she needs to go quite that. She loves to overact, you know? Yeah. We do love well, that about her, but it's. Sure. Yeah. Um, so overall, I, you know, I, I, I think it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, what do you think? Tell me more. So it was better than I thought. It was going to be when I originally thought that she when I heard that she was using Jeremy's music, I was frightened because I just don't see her as, you know, Jeremy Abbott is a special kind of artist where he can. Yeah. The music is a little bit depressing. <laughs> it's a little bit downbeat, but he has the kind of smooth edges to kind of carry this and create a moment. And to me, I consider Ashley very entertaining, but I don't consider her to be artistically moving in that way. But I felt that she, because we can use lyrics now and the skaters can use lyrics, I, I thought that she used uh, more of the angst to the piece. And I thought that uh, it it worked for her in that sense. I, some of the choreography is the same as the last program. And again, you're not penalized for that, but the triple looped arms and different things Look, we've seen it in the same program. We've seen it before. And I think that the judges do see that. I think the judges know when you're not being quite original and that they will probably not reward you for that in the marks as much unless you have some out-of-the-ballpark moment. We saw her short program here, too, in the exhibition. Where where do you come down on that? So the short it's program, an it's, it's, it's hard because obviously she does a, uh, a falling leaf where I believe the triple flip would go. I thought that the program looked vacant. And I don't know if it's... Obviously, she didn't go for the full layback spin, and there were things that she dialed back on, so it's a little bit hard to judge. Yeah. She's obviously into her little movements. And it's funny that I feel like she's hitting this point that Michelle Kwan did, where they do like a little bit less is more with the choreography, only she doesn't have Michelle Kwan's movement or track record mm -hmm. to kind of dial it back on. I think she's going to continue to be that skater that really makes a lot with her facial expressions and her upper body movement where maybe the legs aren't doing very much. And I think that that's worked for her in the past and that's going to continue to work for her because she just has that projection that the other ladies don't have. And it's a lot of fun and it's going to be very engaging for the audience. But I think that if you want to pick about transitions, that there's certainly a lot to pick on. What did you, what did you think about that? I think the short program, she looks more comfortable to me. Yeah. That is an ad it's an adaptation, right? That was an old exhibition program. Yes. Am I remembering that? Correct. Yeah. So, you know, she's she's a jock. And I think, you know, in those, in, this is the kind of program that she's more comfortable with. And uh, I appreciate that. I liked it. I, I, I liked kind of the design. eyes. I liked the eyebrow right at the judges, right at the camera. I mean, I appreciate it as someone who lived through show skating. I yeah. enjoy to see someone who can connect yeah. with the camera. Do I think it's as technically nuanced as the other ladies? Not at all. Sure. I do think that she has a certain quality that can make skating a little bit more relevant for the average viewer if they turn yeah. on the TV. And I think that there's something to be said for that. She's not doing a 9-11 tribute program where we're waving and we're picking up the phone and we're confused. And I think that 
she deserves to be applauded for that. I mean, she looks incredibly engaged in her skating. She at does. this point. She looks, she's buying it. And I, yeah. I think that there's, a, there's something to be said for someone who is engaged in her program and giving facial expressions. I mean, that's, that's a lost art. And, and yeah. yes, she's over the top, but she's selling her program like someone from the 90s. And I think that I really enjoy that. And I really enjoy someone that looks ready. And then conversely, kind of we have to talk about Gracie Gold and right. you know the situation that is kind of going on there. So Gracie debuted her new program. Uh, what, what do you think? So... This is obviously music that Sarah Hughes had used uh, during her Olympic season um, by Ravel. I think with Gracie, before she took the ice, I was looking at her. And I was very curious because, you know, you hear rumblings throughout the summer and you hear things. And knowing a little bit about the situation, I was really interested. Because I've been watching Gracie since the World Championships to really see... Where is her mind at? Because last year I interviewed her, I watched her train, we watched her at nationals, we watched her throughout the whole season. And Gracie really wanted to win or at least medal at those world championships, and it didn't happen. And I believe that that was extremely devastating for her. I know it was devastating for her. Yeah. I don't know that they have ever fully addressed or gotten to the root of the problem. And if you don't do that, how can you ever move forward to the next season? And I kind of feel like Grace is in a situation where the problems for last season haven't fully been figured out or addressed. And then how can you start a new season? So when she took center ice, I didn't see the focus or the fire in her eye that I saw when Ashley took center ice. I thought Ashley was ready to start the season against these other top ladies. When Gracie started to make mistakes, I wasn't surprised. I didn't, it didn't look like she was attacking those jumps out there. And I was really surprised that she went for the triple toe after the triple lutz and after that really terrible fall on the triple toe, it looked to an, to a lay person, to a viewer that she kind of lost it or just kind of gave up or lost that extra fight. I mean, she did do the triple lutz later, which was commendable, but some yeah. of those falls, I mean, falling the wrong way on the triple loop, not even doing, you know, doing a waxel, not even doing the double axle triple toe combination. It just looked like it wasn't all together. What did you think? Yeah. Well, I would have just, I would agree. I think whatever happened at World, I mean, we saw what happened, but whatever happened after that, I think that's a traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. And whatever it takes to come back from that or to reconcile that experience, I mean, that takes time. And I don't know where she is in that process. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Japan Open. It's October 1st. Yes. I mean, I think we've seen Ashley Wagner score, I don't know, like a, an 80 or something at this event before. Yes. Am I remembering? Yeah. I mean, I, if this is something that, you know, two Grand Prix from now is still the case, then, you mm -hmm. know, so I, I don't know. I think it's, I don't, it's, let's go back to the program. I think it interests me a little bit less than the Firebird program. I think it's a little bit, we're they're going back a little bit to that softer, more lyrical side when I think Gracie thrives in this sharper, more dynamic program like a Firebird or like her exhibition program. Mm -hmm. And so um, that choice is interesting to me. Um, what do you think as far as that goes? I agree. The music, I don't think, suits her. I think that they're trying more to add more transitions to change up yeah. the order of the layout to add more choreographic merit to the program. But I think the music doesn't sing. It doesn't sound Gracie to me. Like Sarah Hughes used this music and it, she has a very light quality to her and a very ethereal quality. Say what you will about Sarah Hughes, but she did have an elegance to her that with the birds chirping in the background yeah. kind of fit. And to me, Gracie Gold light music, white dress, blending into the ice, blonde hair. I think of Gracie as a fighter. I don't think of Gracie as mm -hmm. this artist, this delicate flower on the ice almost that you get. I think of lily pads and mm -hmm. sunshine. I, I don't know. I, it, to me, it's, it's, a, it's a mix, you know, and I think that they're trying to stretch her, but to me it didn't feel like her. Did you see her connected to the music? What would you think? Well, I think, like you said, as soon as that, that opening fall happened, I wasn't feeling much of anything, you know, from the from the choreography yeah. or from the program side of it. So it's really hard to say. Yeah, I think we would have to see her skate it cleanly to really yeah. know, you know, and see her in practice, how she feels mm -hmm. about it. But to me, I think that the, there's a bigger situation where, besides even the program, I think you have to deal with what happened at Worlds last year. Look at what the situation is and then, you know, address whatever 
the underlying issue is, and that, because she can do the jumps, and we know that she can do the jumps. So right. it, it comes down to mentality and how bad do you want it? You know, and I almost would take a week off and be like, go to Hawaii, go on vacation, you know, be alone and just figure out what do I want the next 18 yeah. months of my life? Do I want to go to the Olympics? Right. Do I not want to go to the Olympics? And if I do, I'm going to give it everything that I have. And if I don't, I'm going to go to college and be a successful student and do that and give my all to that. But I don't, I don't believe in doing it. And personally, I don't believe in doing anything halfway mm-hmm. to my own detriment. But I think that she's at that situation where there's a lot of pressure on her. There are a lot of expectations, mainly yeah. from herself. And she needs to decide, how bad do you want this? If you want this badly, go after it. If you don't, get out. And I think that that's kind of where she has to kind of determine, you know, okay. what she is. Yeah. I think that's fair. Let's yeah. talk about the men. Yes. The men are okay. very interesting. Yeah. Let's start with Shomo. Shomo start. Uno. Yeah. What did you think? Cause this is a very powerful piece of music he's skating to. What did you make of this? I, I, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan. So I, it's hard for me to um, step, take that hat off because I just think he's wonderful. Yeah. Um, this is a, a quad flip. Am I right? Quad flip. Is yes. this the first time we've seen this from him, right? He did do it once last season, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I liked it overall. I mm-hmm. think, and I, and I was thinking the whole time, you know, what is it going to take for him to be competitive at the Olympics? And what is it going to take for him to get on the same level as Hanyu by the end of the season, as far as what we can see from components and what we can see from the GOEs? And I think he's heading in the right direction. What he's taking the risks that he needs to do. I mean, the quad flip, two quad toes that he's going for. Yeah. If he starts landing that, I think he will be quite competitive with many of the top men. I think Hanyu's on another level, unless Hanyu makes mistakes. But we saw Hanyu make mistakes this weekend and at the Olympics in the past. So I, I believe that if Shoma puts himself with three quads yeah. and two triple axles and great choreography, he's in a great position to get a silver or a bronze or a gold. If yeah. Look, we saw at the World Championships that anything can happen yeah. with that final flight of men. And Shoma Uno, to me, is more mature, more confident. He's projecting more than he was. His choreography is more intricate. He's interpreting yeah. music at a higher, you know, degree of I would say so. honesty than he was last season. I think he's projecting that to the judges, and I think that his marks are to continue to go up and he's continue to mature. I think the fundamental problem he has is his landing position and that hit left hip that opens up on the landings, and that continues to be something that he struggles with at times. It's getting better. He works. Do you think that really? Do you think that really hurts him? At times um, it can. At times his jumps can get sloppy, especially when he's tired, and he can lose yeah. the landings. But he looks to be in better shape, more focused, uh, than he was a year ago. He sees yeah. someone who looks like he has taken the experience of the last two years of his life yeah. and really, you know, risen to the occasion. I think it's incredibly hard to be a skater in Japan. I think that yeah. if you're a skater in Japan, you know that you cannot make mistakes and still mm-hmm. be successful, that there are a number of other skaters who are going to come there after you. And I think he really looks to be moving in the right direction, especially towards the Olympics. What did you think of, of Javi at this event? I think Javi is right in his wheelhouse. He is doing a program to Elvis. I thought that Javier Fernandez was charming. I thought that he was... Lovely. I thought that he did what he did. He does what he always does. I enjoyed his program last year at the World Championships a little bit more. I think that this is getting to the point where it's getting a little bit sticky, but I don't think that that necessarily matters. I think it's still fine for what the judging system requires. I, I don't think that no, I don't think that the judging system forces you to stretch, but at the same time, I don't think the judges will have the same impact is maybe I thought that the program he did last year really suited him at the World Championships. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's I think it's sticky. I think we're at the yeah. point now where it's the same content every year, and there's yeah. there's no there's no consequence for that. And so you know he has no motivation to um, try something else. And so I, I am not excited to watch him at this point. And I but I very much respect what he's doing. I mean he's he looks great. He's he found a way to I mean. It, very easily won Worlds last year when Han Yu found a way to lose it. And I think, you know, 
18 more months, it could be the same with the Olympics. There's 18 months, is that right? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty close, and I think he has a great shot. <laughs> I, I think when he, you know, I think, you know, that he looks lovely to me. I think that he's projecting well to the audience. He picks music that obviously suits him. Do I think it's stretching him? No. Do I think that it's entertaining for a casual viewer? Yeah. Yeah. Do I think that he is maximizing his potential? No. Yeah. But it works, and he's getting more consistent by the day. I mean, he had some errors here, but overall, he's becoming far more consistent than the skater we saw three years ago, four years ago, five yeah. years ago. And I think that there's something to be said for that, especially when you look at, you know, Hani is taking bigger risks. And I think Javi more sticks into what he knows is going to work and he takes more calculated risks. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I think Javi has a certain game plan that may work for him very well. Maybe he won't win the Grand Prix final, but maybe he'll be quite set into the World Championships where he really has to push himself. So... Yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see what happens there. What about the Americans? Americans are interesting for me because you have Adam and you have Jeremy. And they've been Adam and Jeremy for four or five years now that we've been looking at them as our top American mm -hmm. men. Obviously, there's a Jason Brown and Max Aaron in the mix. Jeremy's not competing competitively, although he did announce that he is coming back. Jeremy's program, to me, the Pine Open was not my favorite piece of music or genre that he's ever skated to. However, I respect him for taking the risks that he did. And I felt that his triple axles looked tremendous in the second half of the program. They did. And they're the best triple axles we've seen in the United States possibly yeah. ever. If Jeremy can get it together and train and be focused and get quad, a quad or two, you know, quad, quad toe, and do it for one year for a couple of competitions. Yes, he can yeah. be competitive. It's the same thing that we've said with Jeremy Abbott since 2008. <laughs> I think yeah. he has everything that it takes to be a top man. Can you do it at 30 plus years old? I think that's going to, you know, do I think he's going to be world champion? No, because you need three or four quads. But can he be very competitive, get another mm -hmm. team medal, be in the mix of the top six? Potentially. You know, I is, that, is that his stated goal to be in the Olympic team again? I, I mean, I, I look, he hasn't said. He said that he wants to come back and compete and reach his potential. I Next would think, year. Yeah, I would think he would want to make the Olympic team. I wouldn't come back if I didn't think I could make it. That's a lot of hard work. That's a lot of... For sure, sure. I don't want to hit my hip against the ice too many times. Uh... I mean, what do you think? Do you think it's credible? What do you, what do you think as far as his comeback goes? My gut reaction is that uh, the quad days are behind him okay. and that you would, you would need that for the Olympic team. But I would, I would love to see him come back. When I see his so triple axel, I, I think if he could do the triple axel like that, I think he could do a quad toe if he believes he can. Yeah. But that takes a Maybe lot of right. injury and wear and tear. And, right. you know, that's the big... Thing, but to sure. me, he looks. Yeah, sure. Why not? Go for it. Um, what about what about Adam? Adam is more interesting to me. Um, the quad lots. I don't think. Look, is it around? How many times have we? But again, Adam has improved his triple axles. Yeah. Move them later in the program. Yeah. I don't really, really get impressive. this in the program. <laughs> Adam believes his programs, and I appreciate that. He sells them, and that is certainly worth a lot in this judging system. <laughs> uh, I don't feel this program. It does, I don't connect with it as much as I connected yeah. with his last two programs. But Adam is quite strong in what he can do. He missed some levels on the spins, and that's something that Adam Rapon cannot afford to miss ever. He can't get a level three spin. He needs level fours across the board because... That's where he makes his points. Uh, yeah. what, you know, what did you think of it? Well, first of all, I'm really impressed that he's been able to basically master the triple axel very late in his career. I just, yeah. I didn't think that was in the cards for him a couple of years ago. So who knows yeah. what he's capable of? Um, the long program isn't doing it for me, but I really, really love the short program. I know it's a little bit controversial. People think it's silly or campy, but I think it's fantastic. I a lot of people think it's campy. Yeah. Okay. 
No, I think it's, it's wonderful. And okay. I think it's very honest. And I think he's doing a program that only he could do. Yeah. And I think he really believes in the program. And I think it's clever. I think Jeff did a great job. So I'm. that's actually my favorite program that I've seen this fall is his short program. The long program, which I think Benji wait, Schwimmer did. Wait a second. His short program is the favorite program you've seen of everything this year? This fall, yeah. Emily Tuttle, I did not expect that from you. But we'll talk about the ice dance in a sec. But uh, yeah, I, I think I think it's fantastic, and I I, I stand by it. Okay, you you Sorry. said it, Emily Tuttle. Look, you will can throw shade wherever you want, but you are putting your money. All right, you know what? The thing I think about Adam that I really respect is that whatever program he does, if I like it or I don't like it, Adam believes in it and he commits to it. And I think that was I, someone. I don't can, agree. What? I, I think sometimes you can tell when he's not totally sold on the material. I, fe- I felt that way in the past. But over the last couple of years, I would say that he seems like he's believed in his programs. Okay. I would I say the Beatles program he believed in, the short last year he believed in, the year before the programs. It seemed like he, and he sold them. Okay. And I think that there's, he has a confidence, a little bit of a swagger about him. He I, does. At U.S. I'm Nationals, you'll see that. And I think that yeah. that counts for something, especially in this judging system. You know, we'll get to Hanyu, but Hanyu looks down at the ice a lot. La ruined him for me when she pointed that out. And I stare at that now because he is looking down at the ice. Sure. Adam is looking straight ahead at the judges and... I respect that. He's owning his material. He's projecting to the audience. He's connecting. And I think that that's... You know, he used to talk about how Johnny Weir wouldn't really perform for you. You'd appreciate him, but he wouldn't necessarily be performing to you. Mm-hmm. And I think that Adam is performing to you. And I think that that's something that needs to be rewarded in this system. I have to think about that more. I don't know if I entirely agree. I think this short program this year is for the audience. And I think it's okay. maybe- he believes it, and he's giving it to you. Um, I don't get that same feeling from the long program. Okay. Um, but um, maybe I will. We'll see. Okay. Well, I don't think he's, he's quite as far yet in the long program as he is. He's right on board with the short program. He believes that it. it was great from the start, and I think it's only Do you like the better. little, when he's driving the car? I think it's car? great. I do. I think it's cool. Come on, Emily, do it. You know, come no, on. No, not. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move to the Autumn Classic because your yeah. girl, Ryan Nagasu, won the event. She did. Were you surprised to see? I mean, this is talk about late in a career making a turnaround. Ryan Nagasu, yeah. the last year and a half, has. Yeah. Turned. You said something we were talking yesterday, and you said, wouldn't it be funny if she won nationals, I think, nine years apart? Yeah. I mean, that would certainly be a record. Um, and it's, it's in the cards. I don't know if it's likely, but yeah, she looked great. The short program was wonderful. And there's, I mean, when I saw that combination, I felt like that was round. I didn't yeah. have to, you know, go see it again. More, you know, some problems in the long program with the rotation. I think she was more nervous in the long. I think she knew that this was her first title on the line. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Yeah. And I, I did, I did like the short program quite a bit. The long program, you know, I, it's, it's, what did she you survived. think of the program? Yeah, what did you think of the um, the choreography and the, the program itself? I think that it has nice moments built in. Uh-huh. I think that what we saw here was that Mariah looked nervous for the free skate. Whereas sure. in the short, she attacked more, so mm-hmm. connected with it more. When Mariah gets nervous, she loses the face and she gets a little bit tight and the, the jumps become under-rotated. I think that winning this competition, as opposed to finishing second or third should help her confidence because it doesn't help as much as if she skated lights out both programs. But I think winning here has to be a step in the right direction for Mariah Nagasu. She hasn't won a competition in a while. If you think about that, when is the last competition that Mariah won? It's been a long time on the senior level. This has to be a rejuvenation to her career. I mean, she is turning it around. And I think that you look at, the Grand Prix, she could be a medalist in the Grand Prix. And if that happens, I think that she realistically has, you know, a bright future for this season. I don't think that I necessarily think that she's going to be number four in the U S I think that the other ladies are going to have to contend with Mariah if they want to get a number, you know, I think that Paulina Edmonds is going to have to really look at Mariah Nagasu as someone she's going to have to contend with if she wants to make that world team. Whereas before I don't think she had to really feel that way necessarily. I think that Mariah had to look more to Paulina. I think now Mariah has the advantage that she's done quite well a number of times. And I think that she has every reason to feel confident going into the Grand Prix. Absolutely. 
Let's talk about the men. Um, well, specifically, let's talk about Hanyu. All right. What did you think? What do you think of the programs, first of all? All right. So I think, ultimately, I want to see a do-over because it's really hard to judge programs when Hanyu makes mistakes because I felt like he was so disappointed and his body language was such that when he opened up on the quad and he made mistakes in the free program, I felt that he lost some of the magic. Okay. And I felt that, in the free program, I thought he looked exhausted. So I really felt, and I felt like that music doesn't carry him as well as the music did last year. I loved that step sequence that he did at the end of the free skate last year. And I felt like this program missed that moment. What did you think? Well, I really liked both of his programs last year, and I liked them immediately when I saw them, especially that short program. I was like quite moved by it the first time I saw it. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't have that reaction to this material. Do you get excited when you hear Dearly Beloved? Does it like turn you like... (laughs) Um, Do you think Hanyu, you know, knows who Prince is? I I don't know. Maybe. And I I didn't... uh, I I don't know. I I don't want to comment yet. I'm not sure. But... um, (laughs) As far as these programs, I think they're totally acceptable vehicles for yeah. him. I, they're not going to hold him back. No. I did like I did like the long program. I thought uh, I didn't like it as much as last year's, but I thought it was nice. And that the circular steps uh, early in the program were, were very lovely. Yeah. And I think you know get get you know three or four quads in this program, and people will be in tears. I mean, it's that kind yes. of it has that potential. So you know, I feel fine about where he and is. I think I it's going to take longer to round into shape when you're doing a program with four quads. I don't think you're going to do it. September 30th, September 1st or 2nd. I don't think that's going to happen the same way. Sure. Did he peak too early last season? Well, I think that's certainly something that is very, you know, I I think, yes. Yeah. Is that what you think? I mean, I don't think there's any way around it, yeah. I mean, he he made a good effort at Worlds. He was, you know, practicing as well as he could. But I think this year maybe he's pacing himself to be ready for March. So the mistakes that we see in October, I'm not as concerned about. I'm not concerned at all. Yeah. Yeah. I think that he is going to be on track to be very competitive yeah. later in the season. Maybe he won't be setting records as early as he did last season, sure. but that could be quite beneficial for yeah. later in the season. And I think it's a new game. We haven't lived in a skating world where people are successfully landing four quads and selling choreography. So yeah. that's a new ball game. And I think that it's yeah. going to take time to adjust to that and we're going to have to change our expectations. But I think that the programs have potential. I would like to see him look up and own them more and sell them because you have to sell prints. I mean, you can't halfway sell prints. You can't rely just on the music. If you're not owning every single, you know, moment of that Jeff Butto choreography, I think that you are going to, you know, do a disservice to the program and then it's going to look disjointed. But I think that he has the potential to create magic with it. I don't think that they're there yet. Yeah. I agree. That's okay. But what do you make so, of Max Aaron, Emily? I haven't talked to you about the Lion King program. I've been yeah. a little bit mum on it. I did, you know, he did change out the Elton John. Okay, so I have a question. So you saw an earlier version of this program, is my understanding, right? Yes. And so it had Elton John vocal track. Can you feel the love tonight? Yeah, okay. yes, it was there. It was changed by the He Lives in You. Well, okay. Yeah. All right, now, I, so, you know, I've heard chatter about this program, and, I, and so I was expecting the worst, and I didn't think it was that terrible. However, I don't think Max is sold on this program, you know, and I, I don't feel like he's all in on it. And there were a couple moments where I felt like he was kind of rolling his eyes at his own, his own you know, this, this choreography, especially in the footwork, like where he was just kind of like, I know. There were um, parts of it that I thought that he was selling parts of the program that I was rolling my eyes at and Max was selling and I was confused. <laughs> that was, that's what gets me about there are parts that I expect him to eye roll at and I felt like he was trying to sell. And Really? I didn't have that experience at all. And almost parts I felt he was marking the choreography. Okay. And I, and I was like, come on, you have to beat me halfway here. Um, and if he's not believing in the program, like, I'm certainly not going to get on board. Um, so I think that the music changes too early. Because he goes from the opening music, which is the African-sounding opening, and it automatically, you know, shifts into, like, that theme music. Yeah. And I think it goes cheesy too early. Okay. I think Max Aaron needs to make us feel like we're in Africa and we're, you know, circle of life, pride rock, you know. And all of a sudden it kind of goes to that like cheese theme on the flute and all of that way too early. 
And in, when he's going into the quads, and I, I don't buy it. From the mo I think the second the music changes in the beginning, I'm like, oh, oh, Max. I yeah. roll. I mean, this is one of the big eye roll programs of all time. I you have think? To, yes, I really do feel that way. I, I've i tried to. You think it's just because it's Max? No. I mean, you liked, what did, when um, Haven and Brandon did Lion King, I think you liked that program. I did. And that was a different music edit. And they also sold it. Max gets so focused in the quads that he loses yeah. his connection to the music when that music change happens. And all of a sudden he starts taking jumps. He's not selling this music. Yeah. It is cheesy as all get out. And you have to be believing it to make us believe it. And sure. he's so focused on his jumps that I think that we are kind of then disjointed as viewers. And so as is, it fi is it fixable? Or should you just try something else? Oh, look. How long do you stay with a relationship that isn't working <laughs> when you have fights with a boyfriend? How long do you keep going? Or how long do you say you find the next one? I mean, yeah. look, I think that that's... Do you... Why not skate to Game of Thrones? Why not to do something more sure. when you think Max Aaron? You know, do something a little bit more powerful of a stoico 2016 do something sure yeah if it was if it was like a stretch if i thought he was going in a direction that was interesting or challenging himself and i, I don't think that this is that you know I, what you i mean know what? i wouldn't spend too much time wasting creative energy on the lion king at the end of the day if people don't think that it works move on move along yeah. don't waste your time you have a quad toe master. You want to do your quad cell combinations. Right. This is not the program to worry about. Do right. something that you think is comfortable, that you can relate to. D don't have this be the stress. This is not the thing to worry about, Heavily. We don't yeah. need to worry about which pieces of music from the line we're going to do. You know what? I think that we saw it twice now. Mm -hmm. We saw it at Champs Camp. And if the USFS judges really wanted this to go forward, and apparently they were on board, I think that there's a problem in the feedback that you're getting. And you have to look right. at who's giving you honest feedback and who's telling you what you want to hear. This is not the program to uh, move forward with. I think at this point, okay. it's just, I don't, I don't buy it. And I, I think that the results speak for themselves, I think, at that point. All right. I mean, I mean, all right. I mean, you on board? You make me look like the bad guy here, Emily. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't say that I'm on board and I, until I heard this from you, I, I would, I would think, oh, we can rework it. We can make it a little, we can uh, try some more music cuts. Um, maybe you're right. Okay, maybe here's it's just the thing with our music cuts. The music cuts are poorly edited. <laughs> so right. when you switch between the pieces of music to the, from the, he lives in you to the, so you think you can dance footwork music. It sounds like a music edit that was done in your Casio. Like, this needs to be seamless. It doesn't flow from one thing to the other. Yeah. So when you change pieces of music and you swap them in and out, they have to make sense. They have to be in the same chord progression. They have to be well done. Right. You have to have Hugo Schwinard pay his orchestra to, you know, do an interlude here. Yes. This has not been done here. It just sounds like we're swapping in and out tracks and... To me, yeah, if it's not it, yeah. done with an artistic vision, if the artistic vision is missing, uh -huh. it's going to always be missing. And I think that if it doesn't flow together well, it's never going to flow together well. And what you put in mm -hmm. is what you get out. And this, to me, I just don't think that we have the right piece of music. I think that the thought is a little bit missing. And the, get it. Scrap it. Just scrap it. Go back to an old program. Go back to a new program. Whatever you want to do, I think you would just have to save yourself a giant headache because we can be tweaking this program until the end of the season and it still won't please people. And so what I, my view as one member of the judge of the panel of life feels. So yes. Okay. <laughs> what did you make of the pairs? No, I want you to tell me what you made of the pairs. Um, so, I think you're a, you're a Julianne and Charlie fan as am I. Yeah. And they were great here. So Julie, uh, Seguin and Charlie Bilodeau, I had the opportunity to watch them train a couple of weeks ago yeah. when I was in uh, Montreal. I went to Chamonix and I saw them train and they competed exactly as I saw them train. 
Yeah. And I think that that's what was so impressive is that it didn't look like they were nervous at all. They And apparently they had struggled a little bit at the high performance camp and at the, the competition this summer. And there were some questions about whether or not they would perform as well here. Um, they do leave a couple of points on the table with, you know, their choice of death spiral and their choice of lift in the free skate. You know, they could get a couple, maybe three to four more points. Overall, that that could be more of a, you know, situation mm-hmm. as they get into the medals at the World Championships. And that's something they can look at throughout the season. To me, they look incredibly strong and could be well prepared. Yeah. A pair team doing side-by-side triple loops. I mean, that's something yeah. that I don't think that we ever really thought that we would see. They have choreography where they're in hold. I think that they're trying to mm-hmm. improve themselves. And they're really a team that I look to for the medal rostrum this season and, you know, for champions for the future. Yeah, I, I really respond to their, their packaging. I think that they have a good team behind them. And they they have strengths and weaknesses, but they, they create um, programs that really highlight their strengths. And... Um, I'm really interested to keep watching them through this year. Uh, I don't know what their ceiling is. I mean, I, I don't feel like they're a top five team in the world right now, but maybe I'm wrong. I think if they were close to that, certainly last season, you know, the Grand Prix final, they did quite well. And, they did. And then they wouldn't see them at the World Championships. I think yeah. at the end of the day, they're consistent. And I think yeah. we saw at Worlds how many teams make mistakes under pressure. And if these yeah. two kids keep skating well... I think we didn't view them as a top five team in the world last year, and they proved everyone wrong, that they felt like they skated to that level. So I think that if they're consistent, their consistency is certainly going to win the day because they do skate with a lot of quality. They don't have the prettiest mm-hmm. left positions that I've ever seen in my life. They have solid throws, solid jumps, solid pair skills, and they skate as one. And I think that that's something that I respond to. And what about Marissa and Mervin? I know they had a really rough time, but where do you, how do you feel about, first of all, their programs? I know they're using the same long program, but this new short program. Short program, I mean, it has nice moments, and they have some nice chemistry together. They're more of a short program team. Yeah. They get tired and sloppy. I honestly think that they're approaching the same situation where she was with Simon, maybe at this point four years ago. where. Really? The mistakes, they've had errors, they've had struggles, they've had some successes, but we have to get on the same page and it has to get on the same page in the training. Because they are competing the free skate, how they train. I mean, their free skate here was not much different than it was a couple weeks ago, which is not much different than I saw it when I was there in training. I see the potential of this team. I see that they have a lot of quality, but they have mm-hmm. some inconsistency. I mean, I saw Marissa Costelli nail a triple toe and warm up at Mid-Atlantics, and then we haven't seen it in competition. And it, mm-hmm. I think that their problems are more mental than physical it's at certain points, you know, with the jumps and with some of the popping and, you know, sometimes she'll be ahead of him in the music. Like it looks like maybe she speeds up and he's too slow. And is that him being stubborn and her being aggressive? And they never, you can watch the little pieces, even like the kicks and the mm-hmm. choreography. And it's supposed to be just like a fun moment. And you see like, oh, they're not kicking at precisely the same time. This is not Brody even Grink off their hearts are beating at the same time. And then when you see them kind of one jumps before the other one, one spins a little bit ahead, but then we see other times where they look together. So I think that it's kind of a, a situation where they have a lot of goods and they need to package it. What do you think? Yeah. I wouldn't compare the situation to the situation that she had with Simon. I mean, they really had a feeling as a team, they were always mismatched. Okay. And uh, I think this team is, wonderfully matched i think yes. they're the best mat- the best matched american team i think that they're mm-hmm. they look great together um i think they have great i mean i know they're both jocks but i think they have great sexual chemistry i think that it's very yes. like a romantic sexy look between them that i really respond to and i think it's i i, I think that they're just the most dynamic team to watch uh, mm-hmm. in the american field for me um they're my favorite be, to watch so yeah. I, I like to watch a few of them but i think that yeah they have that extra factor yeah and so that's what makes it so frustrating when you see all these other things. And to be fair, I think they were off the ice. Is that correct? Um, he was off the with ice. With a concussion? Oh, okay. So, you know, you have to take that into consideration. Um, I want them to be great. You know, I want them to be national champions. And I don't know if it'll happen this year or ever. But, um, I, 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 yeah, I'm a big fan. <laughs> I just think that, you know, we get reports that this is how they've been training the free skate. Okay. I think that, you know, the, the short program, they did a great job. They got a personal best. And that has... What they did, they need to do that short program from here on out and hope that the score matches. The scores were a little bit high this weekend, but it was a great effort. Right. And I think that, you know, 
they do a great chart program, they have to figure out the free, whether it's readjusting elements. You know, I think that they need to just have a meeting where everyone puts everything out on the table and they have like a giant strategy session about what are they going to do? Are they going to get the throw triple flip? Because today, you know, this weekend it was a throw double flip. Mm -hmm. A couple weeks ago, it was a throw triple flip, but it was under rotated and two footed. So you kind of have to look at, is that, are they going to do that throw? And if that's the throw, you have to commit to it. And I think that they're just at that point where you have to have that kind of meeting where everyone gets on the same page and gets together. And I think that they could be national champions this year if yeah. they start training like national champions. I think that they carry themselves with a lot of class and they have that extra look. They have a world-class yeah. quality to them. And I think that they, if they believe it, it'll happen. Until that happens, I think that we're going to keep seeing the output that we see. And I think that that's... You know, we've seen it in so many pairs. So, But I think yeah. that the field is wide open for American pairs this year. And I think that this would be, it, it, you know, this They is, need to make their move this year, for they sure. They need to make their move. And I think that they have the potential to make their move. I mean, when they land something, Marissa Castelli looks like a million dollars when she lands yeah. something. And I think that that's, you can never lose sight of that. So I think that at the end of the day, they have that kind of in their back pocket. Um, what did you think of and, Vanessa James and Morgan Cypress? They look great. I'm always, I, I felt they were fine. Yeah. What do you think? I always yeah. feel like they're fine. Okay. They have a quad throw. They're going to get points for it. To me, I don't, I never see the same skating skills or the quality or the interpretation sure. I see from the other teams. It's just not something that I really, I don't think they have some of the same qualities and the same matching and the same attention to detail about some of the other teams. The, you know, what I'm looking for, but they get elements done and they get points for that. So they do. They were very were there any of the other pairs you wanted to talk about before we well, go to Well, I really did today? like uh, Kemi Ruas and Drew Wolf. I thought that, you know, they did a good short program. They they don't quite have a triple twist yet. They have a double twist, so it's not their strongest element. But they're a really delightful team. They put a lot of effort into the choreography. They're incredibly well matched uh, in Canada. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of the, you know, the best matched Canadian teams that you know, right. exist. They had a free skate where she fell on a throw on the toe, and then it just went downhill from there. But, you know, what they did... And you, yeah. you met them recently. Yeah, and I, I interviewed them, and I watched them train, and they have right. a program to Earth Song that's incredibly innovative. They spend a lot of time in the choreography, and it's very different. So I hope that they can deliver the program as well as they're capable of to really highlight that, because I think that what Julie Marcotte is trying to do in Paris skating is very relatable. She's trying to use a lot of music that the audience will respond to with the journey program with uh, Edith Piaf, which Megan and Erica use. Yeah. I and mean, I think that we're away from the days where we hear the same classical pieces of music again and again and again. And I was thinking this weekend about how strange that is that we're in a new skating world, but maybe that's not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. And I mean, and sorry, it's a great point about Julie and mm -hmm. she probably deserves most of the credit for that. When you say as yeah. far as the Paris field, because I think they have the most diversity of music choice at the moment. Maybe that'll change over the next four or five years as everyone's using vocals. But I think I'm a big fan of hers and I think you are as well. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think she's done. I mean, she's the go-to pair choreographer in North America, yeah. maybe beyond. And I think that's well-deserved. I think a lot of times there, my problem with the Paris short programs is there's all long programs as well, but particularly the short programs is they're just so overstuffed with transitions. Mm -hmm. um, and and it takes me out of the program, even the ones that I really enjoy. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think with this program to Earth Song, I thought the transitions work. And I think that this is a team where they don't have all of the most difficult elements, so they can gain points by doing transitions and doing interesting choreography and getting the crowd on their side of being clean. I think that Cammy and Drew need to deliver a clean free skate and that they'll finish very well because they'll get lots of high marks for grades of execution and transitions and choreography and interpretation. They have that look. They, they're incredibly well matched. They need to land the elements at the end of the day and they need to not... If they have a mistake, they need to recover from a mistake. And, you know, there was an element, you know, that they missed with the spin after a missed jump. And, you know, that just can't happen at this level. That's four and a half points gone. Uh, sure. And, you know, that adds up throughout the free skate. But I think that this is a team where if you don't have a triple twist, every, you know, all the little extras that are in there have to be incredibly nailed and done until you have that triple twist. And I think that this is this kind of special program that people can really get behind. I think it's, you know, every season you, you have that one or two 
programs that just kind of carry it and you know but you have to deliver them well and I think you, you know you look back to the Shibutani's in 2011 they had that free dance that just was the right program and it just carried the right them moment, throughout yeah. the season at the right moment and I think that this could be that program but they have okay. to deliver it yeah that's interesting all right, are we, are we ready? I am ready for Ice Dance. Emily Title, this is your expertise. This is why you are on the skating lesson. So sure. let's talk about it. Okay. Where do you want to start? I guess we start... Um... I think we start with Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer. Their right. return to competition with Marie-France Dubray choreographing for them. What do you make of them in this new coaching situation, this new choreographer, Prince Short Dance... Latch free dance, what do you think? Well, first I want to talk about the short dances in general before we talk about Tess and sure. Scott, because I have so many thoughts about what's going on this year. Um, first of all, we haven't seen all of them yet. We haven't seen the French, we haven't seen the Shibs, and we've been Poche and some others. Mm -hmm. um, I think largely these short dances are kind of a mess. Um, and I, I, But I, I think that's a function of the requirement itself and not necessarily um, of... Any, limit, any limitations from these coaches or choreographers, I mean, any, um, de uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yes, Deficiencies yes. from Deficiencies these uh, <laughs> coaches and choreographers. These programs look like um, there's free dances from the 70s and the 80s, so like where it was like a karaoke set, you know, where every, there was all these different songs um, in one program that had no relationship to each, to each other. And then Torval and Dean came along. And now we have this idea that a program should be a whole thought and it should be cohesive. Mm -hmm. Um now, <laughs> the problem here in these short dances is you have to do, you have a blues, you have to do a blues and you have to do the pattern dance in the blues section. Mm -hmm. And then you also have to do a non-touching step sequence and you have to do the non-touching step sequence either in the hip hop, in a hip hop rhythm or swing. swing. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> it's very tricky to transition from blues to hip hop music. Mm -hmm. And if you transition from blues to swing, I think it's very hard to do a non-touching step sequence to swing music because that's a partner dance. And so there's all these limitations and obstacles that these teams, you know, are facing. And I, that being said, I think there's a lot of interesting things happening. Mm -hmm. I think that there are moments in a lot of these short dances that are, like, quite good. Mm -hmm. And I would put Tessa and Scott in that category. I think that the Prince program, I think it's three different, I don't think, I know, it is three different Prince pieces. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it's still not cohesive, even though they're using one artist. But I, I really like that that opening, that kiss section. I think it's absolutely what about the me. purple rain section it doesn't do it for me i mean i, I, Emily Tuttle, I was dying in the purple rain section it was my yep. favorite the twizzles first of all the lift is great the lift is great this is a girl who missed the twizzles how many times in 2013 and 2014 she nailed them both times this weekend yeah not even a question i'm not talking about the twizzles yeah I, yeah i mean <laughs> she was she was she did great and i i think that well, first of all, do you want to talk about the free dance? Um, do you do you want me to? Well, let's go back to the prince. I'm so mad okay. you didn't like Purple Rain. I look. No, I don't dislike it. It's my I second favorite section. I thought the end section. of the program. I thought the very ending was spectacular. <laughs> yeah, and I saw a picture of that lift in practice, and I was like, "Oh, that lift!" You know, it's not one of my favorites. But you it actually, are such a it, naysayer it, it, on this team, Emily Tuttle. No, it's not true. Um, and so when I saw it in the program, I thought, oh, it really, really works. It's exactly where it needs to be. And it goes right into that ending position that's quite dynamic. So um, I think, you know, it's struggling with the same problems that all the short dances are struggling with, where I'm just very jarred throughout by these transitions or lack thereof. Um, but, I mean, it's definitely one of the best ones that I've seen. What do you think? Out of the short dances that I have seen, I think has the potential to be the best short dance of the season from what I have seen. Okay. And I have seen the training mates train. Right. I respond more to this program. Okay. What no, I, I feel. Uh, yeah. Just personal preference. I think that they create a moment and that it's very current. And I think that that's, it it's, I think that that's where dance is going or ice dance is moving towards or what they're trying to promote. And I, I, I respond to this dance. I agree that it struggles. And I think in the midsection really for me, yeah. Um, to me, the opening and the ending to this program are fantastic. Uh, what do you me, think I about... just think that they have quality. Okay. They have quality in their edges. When you watch that oh. no-touch step no sequence, doubt. they're the most... Nobody does, nobody, does it like, nobody does it like them. Nobody ever has. I mean, that's 20 years of skating together. I mean, it's ex they're so synchronized. They know exactly where the other and person the is. The depth of the edges are... The richness, the cleanliness of the turns, it's beyond yeah. what anyone can no. do. And they're so evenly matched that I think yeah. that that's incredible that you don't see yeah. from another team. And I think that that's going to be a huge advantage. 
Yeah. I don't so respond do as much to the free dance as I do to the short dance, but okay. I like the free dance very much, but I don't think it's finished quite yet. What do you think? Well, I think it's very, it's, it's kind of a conservative choice for them. This is the same kind of program that they've been doing, um, you know, in Europe and then on tour for a couple of years, these sort of um, pop ballad, sort of tortured pop ballad kind of thing. Um, they're not really spending a lot of time in dance holds in this, in this in this free dance, which is something that they're good at. And I think probably their supporters would say, well, they were never rewarded for that anyway when they did it. Um, and that's fair enough. Uh, but I did miss that, and I did notice it. Um, overall, I, th I think it's good. It reminded me a little bit of the Papadakis and Scissor on Long program from last year. I think it's kind of the same idea. Um, but I, I, I think it's a perfectly acceptable, very strong vehicle for this season. I think that they are very well positioned um, going forward. And, you know, could, I don't know if they could win Worlds, but I mean, I, I think they could, definitely, yeah. I don't, I don't. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think going back and forth on that. But um, definitely it's going to be an interesting be battle, at least. I think it's yeah. interesting. I like the part of the program where they're in the latch. This is the third piece of music, the Sam mm -hmm. Smith. And they do opposite twizzles and opposite step sequences where she's going to the left and he's going to the right, I yeah. believe. And that's something that looks like that is a choreographer's dream that they always want to put in, but is never executed yeah. well because the dancers are never strong enough. And I yeah. thought, wow, there were certain points of this that I found a little bit more conceptual than executed, but I think that they will get there. And I also think they have to add some, perhaps some transitions, maybe change the color of the dress, spice it up a little bit. You don't want to use muted music and muted colors, I feel, perhaps. Um, but I think that it all looks like it's working in the right direction and they have great material to kind of work with. So I have a question for you. As, um, as I did, I know that you were a huge fan of the uh, short-lived uh, Canadian reality TV series Tessa and Scott. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, one of the major sources of conflict on that show uh, was their consternation at having to train with the same um, the same coach as their their rival. Yeah. And so they've, they've been gone for two and a half years, and now they're back, and they've put themselves in the exact same situation um, in a new training center. Yes. And I know you've been up there, and you've seen um, you've seen what's going on. What's your take? So I'm fascinated by this whole situation. Okay. I never watched them train with Marina. The only thing that I can say about Marie France's training environment is that it is incredibly scheduled and the way that every 15 minutes, Marie France has, for these 15 minutes, you're working on your pattern. For these 15 minutes, you're working on your dance spin. Like every moment of your lives is scheduled. So, and there's like a corresponding assistant coach or coach with you. So I don't think it's a kind of situation where maybe it happened before when someone was maybe getting more effort or attention. Everyone seems to know what everyone else is doing. And it switches who's at first. Apparently, Gabriela Papadakis doesn't function as well in the morning, so she tends to train later in the day. However, that doesn't mean that Tessa and Scott are always in the morning. Like they could be in the afternoon with them, and everyone's on the ice. Everyone is incredibly disciplined and, like, everyone's on a schedule so there's no thought it's 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 mostly almost more like gymnastics training in the sense where it's everything is thought out for you and what you're doing you know as long as you're putting the effort in you're going to get the kind of feedback that you need so i think it's very interesting to see how this is going to turn out and which team is going to do better and i think a lot of it's going to be up to the skaters themselves as before you know there was a feeling that politics had a lot of things to do with which team is doing well from year to year, of course. We could say that and be in the same situation where we're talking about politics, you know, six months from now, a year from now. I think everything yeah. looks great on paper. But I think it was just really interesting to see how these teams function in there is that every little moment is incredibly planned out on a schedule, on a spreadsheet. And it was really interesting to see that. So, because all the teams train the same way. And yeah. whether they were... Uh, Liam Ferris's brother, <laughs> or whether they mm -hmm. were, you know, Papadakis and Cicero, they all trained and prepared the exact same way. So I think yeah. that there's a real system in place there. That, yeah. Um, I mean, but it's, it's definitely I mean, something that they're thinking about and definitely something that they're incredibly aware of going into that situation. Okay. Yeah, I wonder where we'll be this time next and year. And yet I'm fascinated by it. You know? Sure. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, that's an interesting dynamic. I mean, we saw videos this summer of Tessa and uh, Guillaume Cicerone doing, you know, hip hop classes mm -hmm. together. So, but I think it, I at least liked that Tessa and Scott had a new artistic energy. It didn't feel like the same 
mm-hmm. schmaltzy programs that we saw for years. And I really respect that they want to move in a different direction because I think that, yeah, why come back and do the exact same thing that you've done before? So, and Marie France has had, you know, a piece in the programs that they've done that you talked about in Europe over the past couple of years. But who else stood out to you in dance? I mean, do you think Hawaii and Baker are going to make a move on the U.S. scene? What do you think? Well, I think it would be really hard to make a move. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that they were wonderful here. Um, They had a rough year last year, and this was sort of, I think, a reset moment for them. And they, you know, got a good score. Um, Well, I don't know. What was their score? Was it Was it in the... Night. Oh God, I wish I could. Emily, don't do that to me. You know, I'm this sorry, has been I'm a sorry. long weekend of skating. You know. I was thinking about um, chalk and baits in um, in uh, Slovakia and wondering. Anyway, um, you know, I did. They scored well, and um, so they got a one sixty point five zero total here. Is what they received. Okay, somewhere in the nineties. I mean, chalk and baits got ninety eight. That's what I was thinking about. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, not a great, a great score. No, I mean very low for them, but they had issues. Um, great program, wonderful free dance, um, conservative, you know, I wasn't, um, blown away by the concept, but I I think that it's a good reset program for them. Like I said, he's just wonderful. I mean, one of the top, maybe three or five ice dancers in the world and uh, she's wonderful too. So, uh, yeah, I have, I, you're maybe, maybe they need to wait, maybe, you know, two years from now, there's more space. And in the meantime, they just need to really keep, um, putting programs out like this Mm -hmm. that, um, people are responding to. Yeah, I think they have to wait, unfortunately. I think that wait and grow and keep skating and hope for the best. And yeah, I think that there's, it's a tough, but you were saying no one quits anymore. So who knows what that means, but it's tight at the top in the U S I mean, you, I think to move forward, you have to have something really striking and really well executed, but Hey, anything can happen. I wasn't expecting them to be dropped a fifth last year and then that happened. So and wasn't right. expecting the Shibitani to necessarily win, and then that happened. So I think there is movement in in American oh, ice dance, and there's a precedent for that now. Which that's, a good, that's, was. that's a great point. But yeah. what do you think of chalk and baits in this material? Well, I mean, their short dance has the same problem that all these short dances are having. I think bad to the bone with Uptown Funk is, you know, a particularly interesting choice. Um, I, you know, it, it's quite jarring as a viewer, for, in my experience. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the footwork in the in the hip hop section and the footwork in the short dance that I think Rohin did, mm-hmm. I think it, I think it's quite good. I think there's some interesting things happening there. Um, the free dance I also think is is a, is a good decision. I think mm-hmm. um, I think it's closer to where they need to be, and it's closer to uh, you know what, what I would identify as a strength for them. Mm-hmm. That being said, I, I'm I'm struggling with this free dance. I've seen it a couple times now, and I and I try to I've been trying to figure out what is you know bothering me about it. And I think it's a little bit, there's the choreography. They both have this issue that they feel like they have to hit every note of the music. Mm-hmm. And they, they add all these little like arm um, pumps and everything has to be accentuated. And I, they, dancers like Tessa Virtue or Madison Hubble, I'd put in that category. They really understand like how to have highlights in a program and how to have quiet moments and how to rise and fall with the music. And this is, that's, that's missing from this program for me. It feels very overstuffed. It feels like work to me. And when it's done, I, I can't even remember what I liked or didn't like about it. It's just like, it's like a sprint, um, but not in a enjoyable way. Um, it still, I think, has potential. I think it's the right program for right now. What about you? I think it moves in the way that they needed to move in a different direction. I think that last mm-hmm. year's free dance was, a, was not great, but better than two years ago, which I think was exceptionally not great, which I think three years ago was incredibly not great uh, when you go back to Les Miserables. So I think that they've had, you know, a stretch of free dances that weren't quite effective and that this is an incredible move in the right direction. I still think that technically, especially now that Tessa and Scott are back, they're going to struggle in terms of execution of the program mm-hmm. and speed and edge work and depth. And I think that maybe the last couple of years there was shifting going on, but I think that you have a lot of teams that are putting a lot of different material out. Weaver and Poge moving to Nikolai, Russia trying to get a, a dance team in the mix, the Italians yeah. continuing on. There are a lot of teams that are trying to move up. The Shibutanis have moved up and I think are going to continue to try to, you know, be on the top three. And I think that it's going to be very difficult for this team to remain in the top three without a lot of effort. And I think that a lot of these teams are going to see a lot of shifting. And I expect a lot of these programs to be reworked as we go throughout the season because 
we've already seen the Chocolate Mates have lost two competitions. They probably hope to win. So I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure that was the, the idea of doing them was to get that momentum before the Grand Prix. Especially with new kind of content. So, but what did you think? Because I saw this girl a couple of weeks ago, Olivia Smart, and I thought this is an Emily Tuttle skater and I texted you about it. Was I right? right. Is this an Emily Tuttle skater? Are you in love with her? Yeah, she's wonderful. I've never, you said that she's been around before. I'd never seen her, never heard of her. Um, I, I, yeah, I do, I do quite love her. She has wonderful, like natural rise and fall through the knee. She has wonderful, just awareness of space and her own movement and her partner. They have a lot of work to do, but yeah, she's like yeah. such a fine. I have so many videos from Montreal where they're yelling at, <laughs> at Adrian to get his leg up on the camel spin of the dance spin. He did it at the other competition at, in Salt Lake and it dropped here. Just, you know, it's, it happened. But, you know, now at that point we're in the dance spin, I'm like, get your leg up. Come on. Yeah. You know, and it's just, you know, a funny thing of what you see when you watch training, but they have that special something. And they're still working on their timing. You know, you talk about Marissa and Mervin, you know, being a little off. They're still working that out. You know, sure. you, can, you can train a certain way. And I think that eventually they're going to hit that mark. But Yeah, I mean, I would assume that they have longer term goals than, you know, next Olympics, I would hope. I would. Um, what, how are you feeling about these hip hop programs, though? Uh, mix. A mix. I okay. think, uh, look, I didn't like the last two short dances at no. all. So... This to me is interesting because some of these work and like Smart and Diaz have a program uh, to Tina Turner that works quite well, you know. And I, I think that for every program that works, there's a program that doesn't work. I appreciate that they're trying to make dance a little bit more relevant and a little bit more cohesive for the viewer. I wonder why they didn't try this for the Olympic year. If they really wanted to make dance so current, maybe save hip hop for when the audience is actually going to watch, if that's what they're going to respond to. I'm interested to what to see what next year will bring, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I think that this is, you know, more modern music than we've seen in a long time. And some of the programs are quite fun. And I think that there's an element of that that I enjoy. They're not executed quite well yet, but it's still early in the season. So I'm kind of wondering what's going to happen. They are a cluster, and this pairing of the swing with the blues is quite curious. But it's yeah. it's, it's we're working through it. And I yeah. <laughs> but I want to know what I was your moment of the week because there was so much skating, Emily. What did you what did you make? There was way too much skating. I felt like very overwhelmed by the whole experience. I don't know about you, but. Um, I would say the uh, the kiss section of the Tessa and Scott short dance was really what did it for me this weekend. I watched it a, a bunch of times. I just love that straight line footwork, um, and I'm really excited to have them back. I think it completely transforms the situation in this in this top level, um, these top six, these top five teams, and uh, I, I'm absolutely completely excited about this season in a way that I haven't been in a long time. What about you? What was your moment of the week? My moment of the week is the Purple Rain section of their <laughs> short dance. I loved it. The twizzles to the end, to the moot. Scott yeah. with the long hair. I was buying yeah. it. I was into it. I was into that lift. I was into the whole thing. Yeah. Every moment. Loved it. And I loved a lot of sections of them. Agree with you completely that they have transformed the conversation. So we want to know what your moment of the week was. What is your artistic influence? What do you make of the short dance this season? What did you think of Han Yu's programs and when do you expect him to peak? So as always, we want to remind you to hold an edge. And what, Emily Tuttle? I can't remember. What is it, Dave? It's look sexy, Emily Tuttle. You can remember. Rude. All right. Bye, guys.